Erev Tov, Chavri, my name is Stephen Benun. You are watching Israeli News Live. The story just does not go away from the headlines. The attack on the Japanese oil tankers in the Gulf of Oman being blamed uh, on Iran by U.S. officials uh, as well. Now Israel joining this uh, blame game on Iran. And uh, some of the narratives that are coming out of different uh, news uh, sources there, CNBC, uh, and of course, we're going to be looking at Fox. A couple of the ones here we'll be examining this evening are quite ludicrous at best. Uh, we had ran two different stories on this right after the attack had happened. Some of the information we had was from very, very former high-ranking sources still in the know in D.C., uh, as well as sources that we have in other parts of the world uh, that were able to give us an insight of what is actually happening. And nowhere uh, did we find anyone that supported the narrative that this was actually done by Iran. But yet, to the contrary, uh, it is something that is being done by another force and perhaps uh, to uh, justify a future attack on the, la on the nation of Iran. And therefore, of course, as we look at this, it's an elaborate plan to bomb Iran. That's what it seems to be. I mean, it just seems rather ludicrous that while uh, the uh, Prime Minister of Japan, Mr. Abe, is visiting there on an official visit in Iran, that at that very moment, these ships are attacked while that meeting is going on. It's almost as if there was a message being sent to Japan that there is an oil embargo going on right now with Iran, and if you don't obey this oil embargo, your oil won't make it. But then again, it could be another scenario as well uh, to make it look like Iran is trying to disrupt all the oil traffic and uh, uh, different uh, commodities that are leaving this part of the world, that they're trying to disrupt it, that they show that they can control the Straits of Hormuz, the Gulf of Oman, the Persian Gulf, etc., and that the U.S. can do nothing about it. Uh, well, that's, that's a, there's a possibility of that, but unfortunately, all the information uh, points to one thing, and that is it is being, uh, a stage is being set in order to justify what could become a massive war against the Iranian government, taking them down, fulfilling the very uh, words of G uh, General Wesley Clark about the seven nations that had to be taken down, according to a Pentagon official there, and Iran was the last on the list there. So let's get a look. Let's take a look at some of these things that are going on uh, just there so you can see the, uh, the, the view of that there. But on one of the most interesting, I think, was this man right here is on CNBC. Uh, his opinion there of why uh, it could be that it was actually Iran. Listen into this right here. They seem to be targeting third, third country nationals. Look, if they targeted U.S. ships, that would be a huge deal. That would bring us into immediate conflict. If they target European vessels and Asian vessels, what they may be trying to do is divide America's allies from the United States. Wars in the Middle East aren't caused by oil. They're not caused by water. They're fundamentally caused by overconfidence. It's been 30 years since Operation Praying Mantis. That's two military generations inside Iran that don't know how the United States is going to react. And so it's important to be very, very transparent with what actions are going to bring what reactions Otherwise, it's a guarantor that we're going to stumble into a conflict. You had the IEA out this morning warning about demand contraction being oversupplied in 2020, and we've had no physical disruption of oil to date. So I think the market is taking a sort of wait and see approach. I think until we can get beyond demand concerns, you have going to have a hard time pushing prices much higher unless we get a major disruption. Where does this war of words between the U.S. and Iran go? I mean, I think this is very serious. I don't think oil prices reflect the degree of severity in the Middle East right now. I mean, the key question is, what is the U.S. response going to be? We've come out and blamed Iran now for attacks on six tankers in the past month. Are we going to intensify sanctions? Are we going to deploy more military assets to the region? I think the U.S. response will be very important. And also, what do the Iranians do next on their nuclear program? So I think those are the factors to watch in terms of where the crisis is headed. Now, if we think about what even uh, this lady here is actually saying on CNBC there, it is also justifying the, uh, the buildup of military, uh, U.S. military presence or NATO allies in, in the region there 
which could very much, as we said, it could be an elaborate, uh, elaborate plan uh, to be able to bomb Iran. That's exactly where it looks like it's headed to. Now, I want to show share with you some very important information here. This is from Fox News. They're going to show you uh, here on Fox News uh, the footage that the United States was releasing uh, that alleges why uh, we, the United States believes that Iran is behind the attack. Let's listen in on this one right here. One, uh, a tanker, and of course it reminds you of the USS Cole attack. That was back in 2000. Former USS Cole Commander Kirk Lippo with us right now. Commander, you must have been uh, struck by a little bit of deja vu there. What did you think? Oh, absolutely. When you look at the sides of the ships where the explosions occurred, it is very similar to what happened to USS Cole. You can see some explosive residue on the side. You can see the metal shoved inward, indicating that it was an external explosion on the ship. The fact that the Iranians went and then removed one of the mines. These are all pieces of the evidence picture that the United States is now building, along with the forensics that hopefully we're going to... Now, we're already getting a case built right there, and this is probably one of the most plausible, uh, um, well, I should really even say plausible explanations for what actually happened uh, to these Japanese ships there. But it is plausible in the minds of the American people. Now you have uh, a former commander of a naval vessel there that is comparing the, the blast uh, that happened to his own ship uh, to that of what happened to these oil tankers. But if we look at the uh, the oil tankers themselves, once you get into a more of a close-up view, uh, we do not see uh, that size of a hole. Looking at this uh, photo right here that we have on the screen, as you can see there, uh, you know the the hole is nowhere near the size of that of uh, what is in the uh, the ship there that was being shown here. Uh, on uh, the Fox News uh, affiliate there. Let's Chill see. For there you go. Just, just relax. Absolutely. Thank you, community. Let's there see here if we can just... and bear the consequence around to me. Come out, states, when you... One of the things that Jennifer Griffin... Yeah, there we go. There we go right there. Let me just kind of pause that right there for a moment. And as you can see, uh, on the size of on the side of the, uh, the ship there, massive hole there. And uh, now, of course, this vessel is burnt up pretty good there in the picture they're showing of that particular tanker. But when we're looking at the, the photographs there of the tanker here, the hole is much smaller. Now, regardless, it doesn't matter. It could have been any kind of a, a, a bomb that, that struck the, the vessel. And, of course, they're already trying to plant in the minds of the people that there was a mine attached to the side of the ship. Now, when we see the rescue operation going on, of course, uh, we see... Uh, a little bit difference there, and that's what I want to share with you there. Let me just kind of pull over here to get to the right. Um, let's see here. Okay, here we go. This here is on the New York Times where they posted this here. Heightened tensions between the U.S. Showing, and Iran, and raised a lot. They were. They're going to show here in the uh, the footage here the actual footage that was released by the uh, United States military there. Uh, let's listen first a little bit to Pompeo. American Sorry, I thought he was going to speak there. Uh, they're going to show the footage that, they're, that they are there. And, of course, they cut the video. They, they go back in. They cut the video constantly back and forth. It is obvious that it, it, it is an Iranian vessel that is there. But according to what they're showing in here is that what that man is doing right there is that he's removing a landmine from the side of the ship. All right, this is what the U.S. narrative is, and that he takes it off the ship itself. Now, they are there actually trying to rescue some of those uh, people off the vessel. And, of course, uh, you know, again, the U.S. is not showing everything on here. They just take and they cut, they splice, they cut, and they splice, and, and, and they're trying to get us to buy that this was actually a landmine on the side of the ship. Now, granted, I, let me back up the footage here. Uh, you know, it does have that appearance right there. It does have the appearance that he, I mean, he's taking something off the side of the ship. Uh, and I have to really, I have to thank, uh, in this case here, Daniel McAdams there uh, from um, uh, the Liberty Report. We were discussing this on Twitter a little bit, uh, and he had shared with me that, 
that they're uh, something of a magnet uh, that they would be removing off the side of the ship. Well, I realized what he was talking about because my, my uh, stepfather was also a ship captain uh, as well. And I knew about not only just magnets, but they also use a device, a suction cup, in order to to secure a ladder that comes off of the side of the ship when you're trying to uh, rescue people off of a ship. Now, this here, this is the magnets that are actually used, but there's one device I'm going to sh share with you here in just a moment here, but I want to kind of blow this up. That way maybe you guys can see this a little bit better. You can see the ladder on uh, demonstrated on the side of a ship. They've got these two different devices. They're used two hands to pull them off because they're very strong magnets that kind of help hold the ladder straight. So when you're coming down, you're not just flopping all over the side of the ship. And you got to keep in mind, you're dealing with a situation of a rescue here as well. But besides these here that are used that where they use these magnets here, to help hold these uh, uh, the, the, the pilot ladders in place so they don't flop around. They also use a uh, one that is done by suction cup, which is this one right here. And it is a big round diameter and it could very much look like a mine or something that would be, be uh, that is being taken off of a ship. And therefore, that's why I think that uh, U.S. officials there and when they're showing you this video footage here, they're cutting the clips. They're not letting you see. All right. They say, well, it took off a landmine. All right. But why do they have to cut? Why do they have to take this off and then put it back on, take it off, put it back on? Are they failing to show that maybe there were some people coming down a ladder uh, off the side of the ship and they were actually held down by a device such as this right here? And actually, there'd be two of them, one on each side. But maybe they to make it look more like it's a mine being taken off. Don't show the clip where they're taking the ladder down or anything. Only show where they're removing the suction cup that stabilizes or the magnet, uh, uh, the uh, the magnet uh, device that is actually used. It's actually called magnets for pilot ladders for clamping, positioning, and holding the ladder in place. As I said, so that it doesn't swing around in the air. Um, so it's kind of interesting. Uh, I'd love to see them do this in an uncut version. Uh, were there people actually being rescued as well uh, by Iranians, which uh, there, there, we know that there were several, quite a few vessels that were involved in trying to rescue these people from these ships here at the time. Uh, so I, I'm just waiting to see how this plays out. It, it's just kind of interesting to me that everything you can imagine is being blamed, of course, on Iran. And as I stated before, an elaborate plan to be able to bomb Iran. All right. Now, also, the oil tanker attacks in the Gulf have, U have U.S. fingerprints all over them. This is according to Sputnik News. And of course, Russia is an ally of, uh, uh, of Iran as well. And uh, so, you know, again, you know, there's two different sides of the story. But anyway, it says here, watching the unfolding U.S. promoted narrative in the Persian Gulf seas over this past few days and weeks, those words should ring loudly in the ears of everyone who values peace and opposes car uh, the carnage, destruction, and horrific waste of life uh, delivered by war. If you swallow the American propaganda plastered across newspapers from pages and uh, dominating news bulletins on every Western TV news channel, then you really are as bright, uh, uh, you, excuse me, then you really are as bright as a dark night. On the morning Thursday, June 13th, two oil tankers were allegedly attacked in the Gulf of Oman, just off the coast of Iran. The U.S. government immediately blamed Iran for the incident without providing any evidence. And of course, Israeli News Live, broadcasting right out of the United States, had already given you the facts on what was going on, but our message was being blocked by uh, officials here in the United States had already put a block on us so that the uh, the narrative could not be challenged until the U.S. had their own opportunity to put up their own false narrative out there. Uh, but you know, from from different sources that we have, and one thing that we did say from one source that we have, very high-ranking official there, that uh, our former official that had shared with us that uh, Iran and China were sharing technology. Uh, a very uh, advanced technology that the United States has not been able to mitigate and therefore it has made officials in Washington very nervous uh, of what's going on between China and Iran. You know, listen, 
That's one thing that could be said for why the U.S. is nervous about Iran and the advancements that they're making in technology. But to go around just uh, fabricating a bunch of lies in order to justify a war on Iran is certainly no means uh, to an end there. So just it's just not good, guys. It's really not good. And of course, uh, we also have Japanese tanker owner denies a ship was hit by a mine, says crew saw flying objects before the attack. Uh, you'd think the guys on the ship, a little bit better witness than that of uh, the United States who are trying to, to give us a narrative that only supports uh, more war in the region. But, you know, after all, war does. Uh, it drives the U.S. economy to the very top uh, that you can possibly get. That's how we can pay off our national debt. Or rather, no, we could loan other countries, especially certain countries in the Middle East, a whole lot more money uh, in order to be able to buy all their weapons so that they can be, um, how would you say it there, uh, completely debt-free. Hmm. Don't guess we have to name anything, do we? All right, anyway, let's move on to other things as well. Saudi-led coalition says it launched airstrikes against the Houthi military targets in Sana'a. Uh, this is, of course, being uh, their reaction to... Uh, what was going on with um, uh, the Houthis being able to bomb a Saudi airport not too long ago. They're now doing their retaliatory strikes there. And then we also have another interesting thing that just that was brought to my attention by Sister Rosa. I want to thank her for sending this to me. The Times of Israel uh, reporting that Soldier was punished for putting dairy and meat in the same fridge on the base. Uh, wow, that must have been a major crime. An Israeli Defense Force soldier was confined to an army base for the weekend as punishment for putting dairy and meat products in the same refrigerator. According to Channel 12 News, he put cheese and cold cuts on the same shelf in the refrigerator on his base. Well, well he's paying the penalty for that now. You know, you know, it's kind of interesting how we get all kinds of doctrines that come along. And of course, as I looked at this article here, I couldn't help but think about uh, Abraham when it says here, and we're looking at Abraham in chapter 18 of uh, Genesis, where it says, And Abraham ran into the herd. This is when, when the three angels, uh, or the three strangers, came down to meet him. One of those later being def uh, identified as God himself meeting with Abraham in a human body. Uh, but anyhow, Abraham ran unto the herd when he saw them come. He invited a man. He fetched a calf tender and good, gave it unto the servant, and hastened to dress it. And he took curd and milk. What? Yeah, that's right. Chalav. Be chalav. All right. And, uh, and, and, and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them. And he stood by, uh, by them under the tree. And they did what? Be yacholu. They consumed it. All right. Interesting, isn't it? Now, because here's what gets me here. The whole idea that you can't have, you know, dairy and milk together comes from, of course, Exodus. And that is where uh, Moses writes here, Thou shalt not uh, offer the blood of my sacrifice with leavened bread, neither shall the fat of my feast remain all night until morning. The choicest first fruits of thy land thou shalt bring into the house of the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not seethe or boil a kid in its mother's milk all right so therefore we come up with uh, the rabbis come up with this uh, this interpretation that means you have to separate milk and uh, or dairy products and that of meat products you can't have them in the same refrigerator which actually has nothing to do with what moses just said he said don't cook this little calf in its own mother's milk, because that is a way of pre preparing some foods. And so he commanded that that should not be done. Well, even the dietary laws go so strict, according to uh, some Talmudic, uh, extreme Talmudism there, that we are, we are not only that, but uh, this is why you, can, you have to have so many hours between dairy and that of meat consumptions, why Israel has restaurants, one for dairy, one for, for meat, and they have to be separated. Um, all because of interpretations of what the prophet said when God was trying to show a humaneness. In other words, it's kind of cruel to do. You've taken the little animal's life, but now you want to cook it in its own mother's milk. Maybe he was trying to show a cruelty issue and not that of, oh, make sure we have separate refrigerators. Nonetheless, though, the guy's going to pay the penalty for that. So he's banned for the weekend. He can't leave the base because he made that uh, treacherous mistake there. 
Uh, anyway, too, this is also hundreds of thousands are uh, taking part in this weekend's uh, Gay Pride Parade in Tel Aviv, one of the world's largest in the world. And I guess Israel is so proud of this. And, uh, and, and by the way, uh, it's amazing how many uh, believers in Yeshua uh, support Israel unconditionally. We used to do the same at one point. Uh, and, well, just by the way, be sure to remember, this is part of what you support. So maybe you should do that with pride. Or maybe next time you think about uh, the, the secular government of Israel, you might consider what God thinks. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. In a world of Ain Shalom, there is no peace. I do ask, though, that you would pray for peace. Pray for peace in the Middle East. Have not these people seen enough war? And now we want a war with Iran. That's what they're headed to. There are not enough people died, enough children been bombed, enough children growing up in Syria that have, that from the time they are born uh, to almost the age of 10 years old now have seen nothing but war. Thanks to countries like Saudi Arabia, the United States, Israel, Turkey. Yeah, yeah people want to blame Russia too. But at least Russia went in there to try to over turn this terrible situation doesn't make Putin some saint or knight in shining armor I'm not trying to say that but I'm trying to get you to think of the realistic side of this had we just stopped arming the jihadists in Syria this what nearly half million Christians that were murdered in this campaign or maybe that's the objective of the war to begin with and by the way, Iran has over a million Christians living in Iran. Maybe that's another reason why they want to target Iran. I'm Stephen Benner with Israeli News Live. Listen, if the truth is what blesses you, support our broadcast, please. You can visit our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. You can donate right there online or... Right here, you can see below the screen here, our my name, uh, Stephen Ben-Noon, our address. Be sure to put Stephen Ben-Noon. I do write books. I've written two books, Israel, Are They Still God's People? and Yam Suf, Israel's Final Exodus, under my pen name of Dinun, which is the French version of our family name, but it is not my actual name. Stephen Ben-Noon, uh, and our address here in Orlando, Florida. Very